talk about our glorious inheritance from our Father. We heard a testimony about an abusive husband. And because of what his daughter saw him doing to her mother, she was so bitter. She made a vow. I will never trust a man. And God, the Father, looked for her to bring her to the place of recognizing that he is her father. For it's very hard for you to love the Heavenly Father if your experience with fathering is a very painful one. And so thank God, God looked for her, found her, led her to this church so that she could hear the gospel of the glory of Christ and be restored with the one that created her, her heavenly father. Oh, let's just celebrate that salvation. The one who created her in the first place is her heavenly father. So Paul, with all this revelation, because Paul, he called himself the chief of all sinners, a murderer, a blasphemer, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said in Ephesians 1, 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which God has called you. In other words, you're not an accident. Regardless of what home you were brought into, because in this evil world where Satan is called the God and influencer of this age, we're not born into perfect homes. But Paul is saying, believe me, I, I, I was such a, such, I, I was so ungodly. I was so opposing to Christ. And now that I am a Christian, and now that I am a son of God, called for a time such as this, I want you to understand the privilege of your salvation. He says, God has called us to a hope. And then we're going to read, oh, Jesus is the hope of glory that is inside of us. For the hope that he has called us to is not just for ourselves, but for us to share with the world. God loves the world. He loves the father that was abusing his mother because he knew that that father needed salvation. He loves the world as sinners. He doesn't love the world when they become perfect. When we were sinners, we were saved. But it says he has called us. So there's a purpose for your life. There's a purpose that he has saved you. And now you see somebody that gave glory to him this morning. He says he wants to heal you, he wants to deliver you. He wants to bless you so that he can receive glory. So she honored her heavenly father by giving glory to the powerful glory and saving power of Jesus Christ. Took her out of darkness of bitterness and brought her into love, into marriage into being whole and bless her in so many ways. And then Paul says, I, I hope you will understand the riches of this glorious inheritance in us. So the, the inheritance is rich. It's not just rich with money, but it, it, it is rich. And we're gonna, we have been hearing about that in the last weeks. It is rich because God gives you honor. It is rich because it's powerful to take away your shame. It is rich because it's powerful to forgive you from whatever. And I love how God has put in his Bible all these people that were murderers and prostitutes and all kind of things. And he uses them for his glory. Why? To show us that Jesus came to save sinners. Oh, let's just lift our hands right now and, and just thank him for his glory. Everybody have a testimony. The riches of his glory take us out of the pit. Take us out of shame. 
Sometimes when we go through situation, we're left in shame. And shame is a darkness by itself. Because every time you think of yourself, it comes before you, who you are. Because shame attacked your dignity. Shame attacked who you are. So it's like you're living in a barrel of darkness because shame is dark. Shame is powerful because it allows you into self-condemnation. And when we are into self-condemnation, it's hard to forgive ourselves and it's hard for God to forgive you. And that's why shame is so powerful and so dangerous. So the inheritance is rich because it's glorious. It's a glorious inheritance, Paul said. He, he, he can't even explain. He says he just wishes the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. And oh, let's just put our hands on our heads right now uh, so that the spirit of the living God will enlighten us to the great glory that we have in us, the great potential, the great possibilities that regardless of where we are, regardless of what we've done, God's glory is greater. Amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace that can go far into the depths of our past and pull it out of the darkness and then display us with glory. Oh, let's clap unto the Savior. And so in 1 John 3, John, who was a zealot and wanted to kill off everybody that opposed Jesus, he said, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. That's who we are. And so regardless of the past, Father said, this is my son, this is my daughter. He, he lavished his love that saves us and then lavished his love that exalts us and bring us into the royal family of God. In Galatians 3.26, it says, you're all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So once you believe in Jesus as your Savior, you're automatically adopted into the kingdom of God. You belong to the royal family of God, and now we have to lead people in the path of righteousness for his namesake. And the Holy Spirit leads us into a path that the enemy don't trip us up as before. And Paul is praying that we will get wiser and wiser and wiser and wiser to understand the voices that speak to us. Because the Bible says Satan is the father of lies. It's his language. And he whispered into Eve and deceived her from her dignity and glory. And they were pure. So we who are impure, we who have our, the human factor where we're not perfect, then we really have to be protected from the voice that speaks to block our glory. God calls us all sons and daughters of God. We are spiritually and legally a member of the family of God. And you will never be alone because Father is there with you. So in John 17, 22, Jesus was praying and he said, Father, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. And so here it is, Jesus says, the same glory that Father gave his beloved son, Jesus loves us so much that he has given us that same glory. People of God, if we tap into that revelation, we will begin to walk into the realm where all things are possible. You have the glory of Jesus in you. And that's why we have to rescue children when somebody will speak into their lives and tell them negative things. We have to rescue them because there's the glory of the Father that can make all things possible to a child, to a young adult, to a woman, to a man. Regardless of your gender, all things are possible to you because Jesus' glory is in you. In Colossians 1, 27, it says, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles. This, the, 
the glorious riches of this mystery. I mean, <laughs> it is so glorious. It is so rich. Oh, what is it? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, people of God. Hello. I mean, that is so rich. You see, and what we don't want is to be a parrot. You say these things and you say it, but it's not in your spirit. You're parroting words. You're parroting a lot of things, but it's not reality to you. And so God wants us to order our conversation and order our words so that what we say, we become. Christ says, I am in you. Do you get that? What does it mean? It means you're sitting down or standing up at home or wherever you are. You are two people in one. You literally have the Christ in you, the hope of glory for the world. And this is why you will know how can we honor you? How can we worship you? And you're going to hear that this morning. Because you are a vessel of glory. You're not ordinary once you become a child of God. He heals us for a reason. He blesses us for a reason. And he saved us for a reason. Because from the beginning in Genesis, we were made to give God glory. He made us in his image and in his likeness to rule the earth and to subdue. And we're made. So anyone that believe a lie that you're nothing, even because of your gender or because of your color or because of your culture, that is a lie from the father of lies because every human being is made in the image and glory of God. And Paul says, I wish it could become a reality for you. So when the attack comes against me now, I know the result of that attack. Because I know who is inside of me and I deal differently with it. I see differently from most people see. Because I'm walking in the realm of revelation of glory. And because I'm walking in that realm, I really believe all things are happening. So even when we go to a, a, a forgotten place like Mathibastad, nobody knew where it was. I knew all things were possible in that place that is unknown. I said, why didn't God give us a, a village or a place that was more known? And somebody said to me, if you got a place that was known, then there wouldn't be much glory. But if you go to a place that is not known and you bring a light to that place that it's now called the place of hope, then that's manifested glory. And so God is allowed sometimes trials to come your way because he did promise in this world you will have trouble. But watch the glory. Look at the person beside you. That's glory. You understand? Just look at them. That's glory. Because if Satan had his way, they, they wouldn't even be here. You understand what I'm saying? They wouldn't be alive. They wouldn't be in their right mind. But that, that, that's glory. That, that person is in their right mind. That's glory. In the name of Jesus, oh, just lift your hands and glorify God. Just thank him of who he is. Thank him of the glory. Thank you that you are alive today. And that's glory. That's glory. And so Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he has saved you for a time such as this. In Revelations 1 verses 5 to, and 6, it says to him, Christ... Who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. So, so here you are saved and immediately you're promoted to be a king and a priest. In other royalty and we're going to see the difference of the kings and the priests. So there's great value in you. You are valuable. He has made us to be kings and priests to his God and to his father. Which means God is going to position you. And if you're looking for a job, I want us to begin to think of job as differently from just getting a paycheck. He has raised us up to be kings and priests. So we need to understand the dynamics of even working in the marketplace. He says to, to, to his God and to father. 
And then he says to him, be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And then Revelation 5.10 says, he has made us as kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on earth. That's why he tells you that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. That's why he looked for you to stand in the gap. When something is wrong on earth, he's looking for a fixer. He's looking for somebody to be a solution. We hear about children in abuse. He's looking for somebody who will be a teacher. He's hearing about the health confusion that we're having now. He's looking for somebody in the health world that he will empower and ignite the potential that is in you. You are a solutionist. Oh, lift up your hands here, people. You are a solutionist. And so whatever is in the other earth, we can complain all we want, but he's looking for a volunteer. Someone he can use to make the circumstance right. He has made us to reign. He has given us his power. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. It means you have resurrection power. He says, go in the name of Jesus, heal the sick, drive out demons. You have healing power. You have deliverance power. Go and share the gospel. You have salvation power. People of God, the same power. The spirit of the Lord came upon Jesus and he went around doing the works of God and destroying the works of the devil. You have his power. And that's why we have to have a mindset of not just waiting to just to eat on earth and then have a job and then die. God wants you to do a job on earth. He wants you, and when the job is finished, he takes you home. So be careful. Because if the value, if the value keeps you alive. Purpose keeps you alive. When I get discouraged and I think, oh, the enemy is attacking. Look, I realize if Satan couldn't kill Moses, why would I think Satan is going to kill me? I'm not doing half of what Moses. Sometimes we get into this camp. Oh, I'm doing so much for the Lord. That's why I'm under attack. Seriously? <laughs> you know, I mean, when we look at Moses and we look at David, we realize we're not doing anything. So just thank God God is using us to do the little that we do. And God will keep us alive as long as we're serving him and have value to the kingdom of God he has given us his power to reign on earth when the enemy attacks you don't forget he's also attacking the Christ in you when Satan raise up people to hate you that's because you're so valuable and he hates the Christ in you Understand the attack now. Because the more God glorify you is the poor people will be jealous of you. And they're going to jealous of the love that they claim God has for you. And they will attack you just like they did Eve. Eve, God loves you. You're talking to God. You're co-creating the earth with God. I'm going to pollute you. I'm going to dumb you down. I'm going to take your glory because I'm jealous of the love that God has for you. Lift up your hands and say, Satan, keep looking. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, tell the devil, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you're jealous jealous of me now you're gonna commit suicide by the time you see what God is gonna do because God uses people like us to bring him glory the big people of God the glory is gonna rise upon you I said the glory somebody take that in Jesus name say amen, amen. say amen. amen say I receive that say I receive that because the glory is going to rise upon you. So when somebody say, Pastor, I'm under attack. Because, you know, I think it's because I'm doing this or doing that. Get over yourself, sweetheart. David and Moses were not killed by the enemy. You cannot be killed by the enemy. Just allow God to rise. Are you telling God to stop the glory? No. Okay, then. All right. Are you, are you telling God? You want God to stop the favor? Oh, no, God. Okay. All right, then. Jealousy comes with favor. So can you give God permission to pour on glory on you? Come on, just give him permission. You know, tell him, God, don't shut it down. Pour on the glory. Pour on the glory. Because you will reign. 
And so when you think of the kingdoms of influence in Revelations 11, 15, it says the seven angels sounded and there was a loud voice in the heaven say, God, wow, wow, the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ. Why? Because God's sons and daughters are influencing in every age. They're influencing in schools. They're influencing in their workplace. They're influencing their business. So businesses, families are now being influenced by God and Lord Christ. The kingdoms of our world. And this is why God will put on a person's heart, I want to be a nurse. God will put on another person's heart, I, I, I want to be in IT. I want to be in media. I want to be in government. I want to be in politics. I want, I, I want to be a police. I want to be in the army. All of those are jobs. Understand that when you are sourcing a job, it's not just to get a job. It is to represent in that kingdom. And because he opens the door for you, the kingdoms of this world becomes the kingdom of the Lord because you will be an influencer. Understand the dynamics. When you understand that dynamics, you will never be hired again and you can never be fired. Because where God positioned you as an influencer to bring the kingdom of this world to make the, to become the kingdoms of our Lord, even if they don't like you, if they don't like the color of your skin, if they, they cannot stop the glory of God, they cannot stop the honor of God, they cannot stop it. That's why some people say, I want to be a teacher. Why? Education. You know, Nelson Mandela says, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Education. Education is a stairway to growth and development of a person. It shapes the society. So when somebody say, that, I want to be a teacher, they think, oh, just because they're like children. No, God dropped that in your heart. And if he dropped it in your heart, the job is waiting for you. The positioning is waiting for you. It's not an eeny, meeny, miny, no. No, God chooses and the Holy Spirit lead you to the right job. All oh, just lift up your hands and understand the dynamic. So when you're in school, he will help you with the struggles in school. If, even if the teacher says you can't do science, if he wants you in, into medicine or he wants you in anything, God will raise up, somebody will take you. We heard a testimony, how how one little girl says I, I want to be a lawyer and one of our judges took that little girl and and begin to she shadowed that lawyer and she went into the court and she went into all the place so she had somebody that God connected her to and she became a lawyer Somebody just had it in their heart. I want to be a teacher. And God will connect them. This is what we do, especially in this church. We connect the children and the youth with the right mentors. That show them what courses they need to take. If they're open. Show them the kind of jobs that will be good for them to start now. And show them a progression of how they can get into the dignity of their destiny. Every body here has a calling all those that are watching online you have a calling if you're alive you have a calling and when that calling is finished God send an angel and take you home and so all of this health care social services arts and entertainment why would God want somebody in arts and entertainment because entertainment make our life lighter arts sports what does sports does for us? Sports bring people together and promote a culture of fitness. So God even uses sports. And what God is doing is even raise up people in sport as influencers. Because they have more influence than us. So God will provide a path for them as an influencer. And all of a sudden they're chosen. My, and, they, and they all of a sudden God give them glory. Where they stand out. Hoping that they will use that glory to give him back glory. Because when God gives you influence, you have to manage that influence. That, that influence is not used for the devil's kingdom. 
And so all of this work together for the calling, that's why some can run more. Most of us w- watch the culture of fitness. When we watch football and we clap and we jump and we dance and we watch people fit. <laughs> we watch fitness and we love to see the fitness and their own body is saying, hello. <laughs> you're watching people jump or you're watching people so fit and you admire the six pack. And then you look down and you see the one pack and you say to, and you say to yourself, yeah, but at least they're fit, yeah. Okay, then God is talking. But it's so beautiful to know that everything that you feel you like, God is the one that is putting it in your heart. And he will open a door for you that no man can shut. Oh, let's clap unto the Savior. (laughs) Kings in all the areas in the marketplace and in the working world. Kings. And then in the priest in Mark 16, 15, and 20, he said to them, go into all the world, preach the good news to all creation. Then the disciples went out, preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word with signs and wonders that follow it. Oh, my word. In other words, when God give you that job, you also have to think about who he wants you to influence. I love the stories of somebody says, oh, I was working with this person and I invite them to church. And as soon as they came, they say, this is my church. And the next thing they do, they get, help them to get married. And the next thing to do, they help to have a baby shower for them. And the next, they planted them in the family of God. And God became their father. Because you're influencers. So when you go to a job, it's not just how much more money and you want to raise, but how many people have you influenced? Because sometimes the stopping of your promotion has nothing to do with your color, but it's because you have not yet fulfilled your assignment. God is your provider. If he wants you to be promoted, nobody can stop you. But there's somebody in your sphere of influence that is waiting to be saved and you have not yet fulfilled your assignment. And God says, if you don't fulfill the assignment, you're not moving up. Because I put you in that to be a king and to be a priest. All the children here, who are the children that you need to get saved? Who are the ones you need to influence? The gangs are in the school trying to bring people into the kingdom of darkness. And what about you, the light? You have Christ. Share Jesus with the other children. Share Jesus with the youth. I mean, the enemy is bold in what he shares. And he's bold to give out the drugs. And he's bold to give you the freebie. And he's bold to corrupt you. The righteous is as bold as a liar. God wants you to begin to share about your faith. Everybody have freedom of speech. Christians, you need to have freedom of speech. You need to boast in your God. You need to fulfill that assignment. This is what Jesus said. The disciples went out and they preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word. God is going to work with you on the job. God is going to work with you in your business. Oh, business. Well, that's something. You have power to hire people. You're providing employment. You're making the world a better place. That is power. That is influence. And when you influence, you have the right to play music that you like. You have the right to put up whatever you can. The Kyle pillars right there and they say, what's that? Oh, I'm a Christian and I'm proud of it. People of God, we're the only one that is undercover. Come out of the closet, people. God, God, we're still in the closet. We're the only one in the closet. We are the only one in the closet. You know, uh, you don't want to wear the cross. You don't want to do now. The enemy is trying to tell us that we can't wear the cross. We can't wear our, wear our religious thing in the name of Jesus. We are Christians and we're proud of it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we look for a bridge that you make sure you're kind at work. You make sure you're not super spiritual. You make sure you're not lazy and then turn around with the Bible. (laughs) Please don't discredit God. You make sure that you're good. You make sure you're on time. It makes sure you have good work ethics. And then people in high place would admire you, Joseph. 
out of everybody, they'll marry you, Rahab. Because they see the change in your life and they see the joy in your life and they see the protection in your life and they want your God because you're a display of your father. Oh, lift up your hands. You are his son. You are his daughter. You look like daddy. Chinese people have Chinese children. Black people have black children. Indian people have Indian children. You cannot be a Chinese and have a black child. Something is wrong with that picture. Go get, get, a, get a detective to figure out that one. And God says you look like him. You speak like him. People, people see something about you and they say there's something about you. There's something. It's called the glory. It's called the anointing. When she speaks something happens. Say glory. Say anointing. You don't have to explain. Just say, really? <laughs> and just put your hands on your belly and say, thank you, Jesus. And pat Jesus in your belly. Because Christ in you is now manifesting. And others are seeing it. The Bible says in Luke 2, 49, Jesus says, his parents were looking for him. And he says, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? People of God, how do you honor, you sing the song about Jesus, how do you honor Jesus? Be about his business. Be about your father's business. You know, uh, John F. Kennedy says, he's expired anybody. He says, don't ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Don't just ask God, what can you do for me? How can I need this? I need this. I need this. I need this. Ask God. What can I do for you? He inspired Americans to start serving in communities. God needs us people of God to be the light. He made us light. 1 John 3, 1 again, it says, How oh, great the love of the Father, lavish. We are sons of God. He said, Father, what can I do for you? I must be about your business. And in Matthew twelve fifty. Jesus speaking, he says, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, is my sister, is my mother. In other words, is my family. Whoever does my will. Jesus said, it's written, what do you want? How do I honor you? Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Worship. And service honors the Father. And so we have to ask, how can we serve you? And so people of God, if you're in this church, even online, and you're not serving it, we have jobs for you in the kingdom. We have jobs in nations. We have Indonesia. We, are, we're, we fed 3,000 people during con pan the pandemic every month. 3,000 people. We have jobs for you all over, people. And we have jobs for you in this Kingdom Covenant, Kail family and community. You are valuable to God in Jesus' name. Worship him, serve him, and call him Father. Let's close our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.